Hey, beer tubers! It's Ryan back with another episode of San Diego Beer Vlog. Thanks for joining me. It's gonna wrap it up for my Lost Abbey week. We're gonna take a look at Amazing Grace. This is a uh, limited sort of brewery only release. Uh, you might see it in distribution just a little bit, but for the most part, you can only pick this one up at the the brewery. Amazing Grace is a beer that takes their Lost and Found, which is their Abbey style double, and they put it in some French oak wine barrels, red wine barrels, I believe, and let it age in there. And then uh, the resulting beer is Amazing Grace. So if you haven't had their their double, it's a, it's a really nice double. I just had it recently, I was gonna maybe review it, but decided just to drink it anyway. I like the other two bottles. This corks are pretty hard to get out. It's taking me a while just to get to this point, but I mean, it's nice and tight and hopefully it's holding in the carbonation, keeping the air out. So let's get a pop going here. Uh, just a mild little pop on this one. Hopefully that means there's not too much carbonation. I did pick this one up from the brewery. I think this came out a few months ago. But well, it's a barrel aged beer, so sometimes it can uh, lack some carbonation. But um, it's a real nice looking beer. Uh, definitely a, like a ruby red color. Um, it looks almost like a, a wine, just like a really light red wine. But mostly just a very red looking beer throughout. Got about a, it probably ended up being about a finger head. Um, uh, just a slight off-white color head, mostly small bubbles in there, and uh, not a whole lot of carbonation streaming off the bottom of this one. Uh, I, I have had this on tap once uh, on the release, but that's the only time I've tried it, so this will be a mostly new experience. Uh, the, the nose, it, it's very nice. I mean, it reminds me of wine. I mean, it's like dead on. Except maybe it, it lacks, lacks the alcohol kick that you get with wine, although this is an 8% alcohol by volume beer. But you got a lot of those kind of big time fruity estuary notes, um, like dark kind of fruit tannins on there. I mean, just a ton of uh, a cherry notes, you know, maybe like a little raspberry in there. Um, just very vinous. That's immediately what you notice about this beer. And a lot of doubles can kind of almost go into that vinous character. So just putting their lost and found double into the wine barrels is kind of really just brings out that character. And there's a little tartness in there as well. I don't think they're specifically using uh, souring critters in here, but I don't know. We'll see in the taste. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to dig in. Cheers. It's actually, um, it's more tart than I thought it was. So they probably are uh, using some some of those critters, the bacteria that you can typically find in a lot of these wine barrels, the Pediococcus, Lactobacillus, probably uh, kind of put some of those in the spear to get that kind of nice tartness up front. Um, so it kind of has a little bit of a red poppy character except um, the tartness is definitely more wine-like. It's more jammy. It's like drinking like a really jammy wine with this beer. Yeah, good amount of tartness up front, but not like crazy tart, like a, a Flanders Red. Not quite that kind of much tartness on it. And then big time just dark fruits, cherries, raspberries, really jammy, like red wine character in the front. It's actually very quick on the palate. Um, finishes dry, not a whole lot of lingering character on it. Um, very, very smooth though. Cannot detect any of that 8% alcohol. So I'm drinking this one pretty cool right now. So I'm gonna let it warm up. It does kind of recommend serving at cellar temperature and this one's probably closer to uh, 45 degrees right now. 
So I'm going to let it warm up a bit and then get back with some more thoughts on it. All right, I'm back with Amazing Grace from the Lost Abbey. Let this thing warmed up. Man, you really start to pull out the, the wood character. That oak really comes present. Start getting a lot of vanilla in there too. So taste-wise, you still get that kind of tartness up front. Real jammy wine character in the middle. Um, just a really smooth, quick finish. Very dry. Not too dry. It's, it doesn't completely dry your mouth out, but there's not any really lingering flavors going on in it. So it's it's really nice. It's got some complexity in there with all those fruits, the the cherries, the raspberries, that maybe a little cut cranberry in there. Um, the base beer of Lost and Found is sort of gets lost in the mix though a little bit. Um, that beer definitely has the darker fruits going, like the plum, the raisin characteristics. I don't get that as much in this one. I just like my palate's getting a lot of that really jammy fruit character but then yeah as soon as you just make sure you let this one warm up because you'll start pulling those those oak notes and it adds the vanilla to the mix with the, with the cherry and, and all those uh, brighter red fruits uh, so it makes for a really nice beer I mean I get a little bit of maybe like a, a caramel character on there with the malt but but not a lot so for a gray I'm gonna go with a B plus for this one I mean, I'm really close to being an A minus beer. It's got nice characters of a of a sour ale. Get that up front, but I think the double aspect of this beer sort of gets gets lost in the mix. But I mean, it has a really nice red wine characteristics, which I really like. I am a fan of red wine. I like Zinfandels, the bolder red wines, and this beer has like similar characters. It just uh, the base beer to me gets a little lost in the mix. Because I would like some of those other kind of characters, maybe more a uh, little more malt sweetness coming through the back end. It is very quick on the palate, but it does make for, to being a refreshing beer. It just doesn't quite get into that A category like the Red Poppy did, which was so this clean, refreshing, uh, very well balanced. Uh, th this is very nice though, but it doesn't quite get to the to the A level for me. So it's gonna be a B plus. For Amazing Grace, it's pretty uh, limited release, brewery only release for the most part. So, if you can find this one in a trade, if you like sour ales, you might enjoy this one, especially if you like red wines. So, until next time, please comment, subscribe. Cheers.